Okay, so now we're going to do some examples. The first one we're going to do is we're going to do a first order dynamic response. Okay, so I'm going to assume my input is the truth signal. So I'm going to say that's like the actual, if, if there was, you know, full truth, this was what the temperature really is. I'm going to call this H my sensor block, and then T tilde is going to be my output. And what I want to know is my measured signal as a function of time. Okay? There are multiple different ways to do this. In controls, I use Laplace transforms. Um, in this class, we're just going to use differential equations. Okay? And so the idea is, is how do you get the uh, dynamic response of this system here? Okay? Well, there's a, there's a first order equation for heat capacitance. And uh, basically, you call that, I think, like CQ or something like that. Um, I'd look it up in the book, but it, it, it's, it's irrelevant really what it's called. I'm actually just going to call it A. Okay? And so the idea is, is that the derivative T dot is going to be equal to this function here. Okay, where did I get this from? Again, it's just the, if you, if you look up the equations of motion for heat, I'm not a thermal scientist, but if you look up the equations for heat, you're going to get dt and t, so, uh, you know, basically change in temperature over change in time, um, plus this term here is going to equal uh, these term, this term here, okay? And so what you need is you need initial conditions. A basically is a function of your heat capacitance, capacitance um, in your sensor, plus any delay in filtering or your DAC. Okay? Um, T is going to be a constant. We're going to use 95 degrees from the last video, so it's going to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. T tilde initial, so the temperature of the sensor of the initial condition is going to be 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And I want to know the system as a function of time. Okay? Um, you have here a homogeneous, uh, you have a linear ordinary differential equation. And so you have a homogeneous solution and a particular solution. This is how I solve it. You can solve it however you want. It's really up to you. I'm just going to show you the way that I uh, teach my students. Okay, so what you do is you assume that T tilde is equal to A e to the ST. So you just essentially assume a solution. This is the homogeneous solution. And then you set the homogeneous solution equal to zero. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use the principle of superposition to add the particular solution with the homogeneous solution and then add them together. So if I take this uh, homogeneous solution and I take a derivative, I'm going to get SA e to the ST. And then if I plug that in, I'm going to get SA e to the ST plus uh, little a big A e to the ST equals zero. And if you look here, I've got some common, common terms here. And so I can say A e to the ST S plus A equals zero. And now I have three different terms multiplying each other. So I could have scenario one where A equals zero. But if A equals zero, T tilde is zero for all time. And that's not true because I know that T tilde is equal to 68 degrees. So that's impossible. Option two is that E to the ST equals zero. But an exponential function can never be zero for all time. Um, if T went to infinity and S was negative, then in the limit, it would be zero, but not for all time. So this is not possible either. So the only possible way is for S to equal negative A. And this is going to have a special name in, in controls. This is your uh, characteristic, characteristic equation, or sometimes called polynomial. And this here are the roots of your characteristic equation, okay? So what this tells you is that T tilde is equal to A e to the negative A T, okay? Now we still don't know what A is, but we're getting there, okay? And oh, by the way, this is the homogeneous solution. So we're not quite done yet, okay? 
So now what we need to do is find the particular solution. So the particular solution, you do the same thing that you did with the homogeneous. I'm going to put some H's in here. So homogeneous, 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 homogeneous. Okay? You do the same thing you do with the homogeneous solution. You assume a solution. But what you want it to do is you want it to be equal to the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is just equal to a constant. So I'm just going to make T tilde particular equal to B, just a constant. Okay? So T uh, particular dot is zero. And so if I plug this in, I'm going to get zero plus A B equals A. And then remember, T is 95. Okay? So that's 95. And I guess I need to give you an A. So I'm going to say A is 4. Okay? So this is going to be E to the negative 4T. Okay? And basically, if you look at this, the A's actually cancel. And so B is this 95. Okay? So the particular solution is just equal to 95. So now you need to use the principle of superposition. And you're going to get that T tilde is the particular solution, which is B. And B is 95. So you're going to get 95 plus A e to the negative 4t is your total solution, okay? So now, how do you get rid of this a here? Well, you need to use your initial conditions. So if you plug in initial conditions, t of 0 is 95 plus, well, e to the 0 is 1, so you get plus a, and that needs to equal 68. So if you plug in 68, that means a is uh, 68 minus 95, which is... Oh my gosh, 7, and then 2. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So then, I feel like there's a minus line somewhere. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that means your total solution is T tilde is 95 plus minus... 27 e to the negative 4t. Okay? And that you can plot on a graph and you can get what t tilde looks as a function of time. And if you look at this, when t is 0, you get 95 minus 27, which is 68. But when t is infinity, this whole term goes to 0 and you just get 95. And so if you plot this, you're going to get that rollover curve there. Okay? Um, I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going I'm to draw this because I think it's kind of important for you to grasp like some of the some of the fundamental concepts from this. Let's see, 316. Okay, so let's erase the board here. Let's keep that there. Alright, so if I plot this, and this is T, and this is uh, temperature, my initial condition is 68 degrees, okay? And this is going to ramp up, and it's going to hit 95 degrees. Now the question is, is how long does it take? Okay? Well, it turns out that your settling time, which is within 2% of final value, is equal to 4 divided by A. That's why I picked A. Okay? Um, and so in this case, it's 4 over 4, which is 1 second. Okay? So this is a pretty fast, fast sensor. Okay? But this basically means that, like, here, when you're within 2% of the final value, you are at, uh, what is this, uh, this is one second, okay? There's another special quantity called the time constant. This is your time constant, which is equal to 1 divided by A. So in this case, that's 0 0.25 seconds. And at 1 divided by A, or one time constant, so 0 0.25 seconds, you are, if this was 100%, this would be 68%. It might be 63, but it's not important. The point is, is that this is one time constant, so one tau, and this is four tau. 
Okay? So if what you want to do is if you want to have a fast sensor, a sensor that responds quickly, you want A to be really, 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 really big. Or really, really negative, I guess you could say. Well, A is the absolute value, right? This is negative 4, but that's because it was negative A. So you want A, the number, to be really, really, really big. At which point, your sensor will respond quickly. If you have a sensor that the A is super small, then the sensor is going to take forever to, um, to respond to a change in the measurement. And so uh, that's when you get into situations like aliasing, which we'll talk about in Chapter 5, where your sensor is so slow and there's so much lag and there's so much delay, it can't keep up with how fast the temperature is changing or, or your measurement is changing. In this case, temperature doesn't change that quickly, so a, a delay of one second is probably okay. Now, if you're doing, you know, uh, precision control on a drone or something like that, one second of delay would probably result in just completely flipping the quad over. Okay, so this is uh, first order, and uh, this is a very, very quick uh, example, but they basically all look like this. So then I'm going to do an accelerometer example where it's second order now. Okay.